Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. Pope Francis at his Sunday Angelus noted that the Catholic mission of Our Lady of Africa in Maziz was set ablaze. Let us pray for peace to return to that tormented region, said the Pope. Oliveira Amimo, the administrator of Mozambique's Chur district, said armed assailants destroyed the Catholic chapel and several people's homes. Missionaries, priests and religious sisters have been forced to flee from remote towns and villages to Pemba and other large cities, which are overwhelmed with displaced people. According to information provided to aid to the church in need by missionaries on the ground, several new and simultaneous attacks by armed insurgents continue harm the province of Cabo Delgado in the north of Mozambique. The activities of Islamist insurgent groups have intensified in the region, creating an extremely complicated situation and an atmosphere of fear and insecurity. The insurgency in northern Mozambique began in 2017 but has seen an increase in attacks since the beginning of 2024. In the last few days alone there have been several new raids on towns and villages, and people have been killed or kidnapped. On February 9, the terrorists, who claim allegiance to the Islamic State, attacked three communities in the area of Maziz, 100 kilometers south of Pemba, the capital of Cabo Delgado. Churches were burned, as were the homes of the population, says a local missionary, who asked not to be identified for security reasons. The attacks, along with rumors of further terrorist movement in neighboring locations, led to the displacement of hundreds of people, who in many cases walked long distances through the bush to find refuge in Pemba or in the closest nearby city of Chur, causing overcrowding. A female missionary, who also asked not to be identified, said the terrorists destroyed houses and churches in several villages and are now spread throughout the southern and central districts of Cabo Delgado, though, the final goal of the movements or attacks are not clear yet. The situation, she explained, is very, very complicated. Yes, many missionaries have also been displaced, said a local priest to ACN, the priest who was in one of the communities has moved to Pemba, the center of the diocese, as have the religious sisters who lived nearby. Other missionaries are following suit, to protect themselves, but also to protect the population, he confirmed. In fact, leaving is sometimes a way to protect the people, because quite often if the priests or sisters remain in the villages people feel safe and stay with them, which can leave them exposed to attacks. Over the past years, there have been reports of attacks on specifically Christian targets and communities, including cases where the jihadists separated Christians from Muslims and executed the former. The insurgency in Mozambique has already caused at least 5,000 deaths, leading to the displacement of over 1 million people with current figures probably significantly higher. The Catholic Church is deeply involved in supporting the displaced people in northern Mozambique and in trying to find a peaceful solution to the conflict, having been critical of both the terrorists and the government's heavy-handed response. The Diocese of Rapid City, South Dakota, announced the death of its bishop, at age 62, after a battle with cancer. Pope Francis named Father Peter Muick, the ninth bishop of Rapid City, on May 12, 2020. The diocese wrote, with sorrow, the Diocese of Rapid City shares the news that Bishop Peter Muick died on February 17, 2024. Bishop Peter was in hospice care after suffering from esophageal cancer. Please continue to pray for the soul of our shepherd. Bishop Peter had just entered hospice care after his battle with cancer. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may your perpetual light shine upon him. His last message on the diocesan website said, This morning I write to let you know that I have reached another step along my journey with cancer. Despite the best efforts of my healthcare team, all treatment options have been exhausted and there is no more that can be done without causing greater harm to my system. Therefore, I have accepted the recommendation of my doctors and will move to hospice as soon as a space is prepared for me. Thanks to all of you for your many prayers, which have sustained me and strengthened me through the many trials along the way. I am grateful. I am offering the trials of this sickness for a deep and fruitful revival of Eucharistic faith in our diocese. I have constantly felt the Lord's presence with me in these days of illness and uncertainty. God is good and will bring many graces out of this time of illness if we are open to receiving them. 
Bishop Muick was born on May 13, 1961 and ordained to the priesthood on September 29, 1989 for the Diocese of Duluth. The Diocese of Rapid City is comprised of 43,000 square miles in the state of South Dakota and has a total population of 227,211 of which 23,934 are Catholic. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may your perpetual light shine upon him. Germany's Catholic Bishops' Conference has complied with the Vatican's new request to remove the vote for the Synodal Council. The Vatican asked the German Bishops' Conference in a letter to remove a vote from the agenda of its General Assembly next week in Augsburg, as reported by Cologne's Dom Radio. The letter requests that the General Assembly not vote on the statutes of the Synodal Committee. According to the bishops' leader, Bishop Batzing, this should now be taken off the agenda for the time being. In the past, the Vatican criticized the German Synodal path several times. The agenda item for the vote on the Synodal Committee has now actually been removed from the agenda. This was confirmed by the President of the Central Committee of German Catholics, Erm Stetterkarp, in a press release. She says Rome practically asked the German Bishops' Conference by express mail not to vote on the statutes of the Synodal Council at their Spring General Assembly and to wait for talks in Rome first. The agenda item has been cancelled since yesterday evening. Bishop Pierre Dumas of Haiti was injured by an explosion in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. The vice president of the Catholic Conference of Bishops of Haiti was hurt in an attack in Port-au-Prince. This attack occurred in a climate of political tension, due to the anti-government protests in the capital of Haiti ongoing since February 7. In a statement, signed by the Episcopal Conference, it was reported that the prelate was hit yesterday, Sunday, by an explosion that hit the house where he was staying during his stay in Port-au-Prince. They also indicated that he is in stable condition and out of danger, so they have invited people to continue praying for his speedy recovery. They remembered the importance of prayer, fasting and almsgiving to live fruitfully this season of Lent. The situation in Haiti has worsened since the beginning of February after Prime Minister Ariel Henry Hess' failure to call new elections as planned since the assassination of Jovenel Moise, which occurred in 2021. Criminal groups have also committed many kidnappings. Bishop Dumas offered himself as a hostage in exchange for a group of nuns recently kidnapped. Dumas condemned the scourge of kidnapping as a hateful and has called on several occasions to end these despicable and criminal practices. He invited all Haitians to join together to form a true chain of solidarity for the country's kidnapped people for their prompt release. The Secretariat of the Conference of Catholic Bishops of Haiti released that the bishop lets you know that he is in a good hospital where doctors are providing him with the care he needs. He is praying for you and counting on your prayers so that the Lord allows him to leave the hospital as soon as possible and that he can resume his pastoral activities and have the joy of seeing you again. May the Holy Spirit help us to remain calm and keep our trust in the great master who loves us very much, they wrote. Watch our program every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.